Today on All Dodgers, my friend Scott Gearman of DodgerBlue.com. Of course, Dodger Blue here on the YouTube machine joins me to talk all about your Los Angeles Dodgers. We are reviewing the first month plus of the 2024 season, offering up some grades. There's a whole bunch of Dodgers conversation coming your way. So let's jump right into it. First, my name is Clint Basias. You guys can find me as Real FRG on the social media platforms, primarily X and Instagram. I'm a longtime baseball writer, sports editor. I talk about the Dodgers and baseball here on my YouTube channel. Consider subscribing if you would not mind. It's completely free. It really helps out the channel, boosts in the algorithm, all that kind of stuff. Giving a thumbs up is something that really helps as well. Now, before we welcome Scott, I got to do a little bit of housekeeping because I got to tell you guys, I'm pretty passionate about this one. Bet online is your number one source for all of your summer sports this season. You got MLB, you got golf, you got NBA, you have the NHL playoffs going on. Who's going to get that Stanley Cup? Hey, check it out. There's a whole bunch of stats on Bet Online. You get the latest stats, the news, scores are available uh, to follow your favorite teams. You get the latest odds, you get the latest lines, including your latest team matchups. There's player props, odds on just about every sport out there. What is there not to love or what is not to love? Go check out Bet Online. Head to the website today. Use your mobile device. Get in on the action. Bet Online where game time starts. But now, it's time to welcome in Scott. All right, so you guys see him there on the screen. That is Mr. Scott Gearman, legend from DodgerBlue.com, and he is coming fresh from the Dodger Blue Gala. Uh, not necessarily for DodgerBlue.com, but it was the the great gala. How you doing, my guy? Tired. It's a long day. <laughs> it's a fun time, but charged up. Seeing all the players on an off day, really gathering for a good cause. You know, hearing them speak so highly of each other, uh, give off a, you know, a great deal of excitement about the team and, and, and speaking about something as important as the LA Dodgers foundation, uh, just really keeps all the juices flowing, yeah. if you will, you know, about the team and, uh, and really where the team's at and in the direction, um, that they're currently on. Yeah. Some really cool stuff out of there as well. And of course, if you guys uh, want to see some, some footage that, that Scott and, uh, Blake Williams shot over there, check it out on Dodger blues channel. They always put up really good stuff there, but I love the Dodgers pledged. What was it? $50 million towards, uh, I, I, forget what the charity endeavor was, but I'm imagining it's just the foundation, but also another 50 if they win the world series, which, yeah. uh, you know, you're really setting some expectations there. And that's something we already knew heading into this season. There were going to be a lot of expectations. That's what happens when we're talking about the Los Angeles Dodgers. And yeah. so we're fired up here. Me and Scott, we're fired up because we were, you know, winging it and starting a new little mini series here might bounce back and forth between uh, both channels, but we want to, yeah settle in each month look at you know the Dodgers how are they doing give our own little report cards have some conversations the plan was to do this one live but you know it's a busy day so the first one you guys get is a little bit more uh, less we'll say less interactive but we got to have some takeaways from this uh, first month plus of the season uh, in being the gracious host that I am I'm gonna let you fire off first what was uh, I don't know if it's your biggest takeaway but what do you what do you take away one of the three I'm hoping you have ready to fire from uh from the hip there takeaways from month one of the season yeah I mean I, the biggest one for me is is honestly the probably the biggest question from last year is where is that top part of the Dodgers rotation and where were they incredibly aggressive going in if I stole yours you know Clint my bad man but we're gonna go ahead and just <laughs> no, say you're good the Dodgers the Dodgers found a true you know one and two in their starting rotation I truly believe that with where Yoshinobu Yamamoto is and where Tyler Glass now is is going into uh it could be reverse that you know where Yamamoto yeah. is going into they found themselves a true one two that can stack up against anyone around Major League Baseball um you could argue, you know, I know I saw a list come out from Bleacher Report that had, I think, them listed as the, like fifth. Uh, and I raised my eyebrows completely. <laughs> you you could make the argument that, you know, you could sell me that Zach Wheeler, Aaron Nola are number one just because of what they've done recently in postseason pedigree. Yeah. But you're telling me that you have Yoshinobu, Tyler Glass now right at the top with what Glass now is doing and able to go out there, aside from the hiccup start that I was at uh, against the Nationals. <laughs> the sixth start, uh, yeah. He's been, 
Yeah, he's been everything as advertised. He has been worth the prospect capital. Uh, Ryan Pepio has been terrific. Nod to him. It's, it's terrific. He's doing what he's going, doing out in Tampa. Uh, but Tyler Glass now is someone who can front a starting rotation. He's going to have the stuff, just like we spoke about, you know, Clint uh, on DT, that Tyler Glass now can command a bump. He's going to go up there, and he's just high-octane stuff, swing and miss. He's able to pitch out of jams, and he's got it, and he's going to come right after you. But I think it's important to note that I always talk about samples, and baseball is all about sample sizes, uh, and a lot of weird stuff happened in Seoul. Yeah. Uh, it's on the pitching front, a lot of the pitchers from Bosa, you know, the, the Padres didn't look comfortable. Dodgers didn't look very comfortable. But after that, Yamamoto, since then, uh, his last, I believe, six starts, he owns a 164 ERA, 253 FIP. He's allowing just a 202 batting average allowed with a sub one whip. He is doing exactly <laughs> what he was paid to do. And he, and, and, and if you even had, look, he's, you could still say it feels like he has room to grow. He really does. Yeah, uh, you, you're paying this guy to be your ace and throw aside, you throw away that start there in South Korea. This is exactly what you were hoping for, uh, exactly what this team and many other teams were trying to go out there and get. And that's a, there's a reason he signed for the amount of money that he did is because there was this ace level upside to him and thankfully the Dodgers end up getting him uh you know you mentioned that that I think you said the Bleacher Report article I can understand people on the outside not watching this team as intently as let's say you and I may day in day out and some fans uh who watch us here on YouTube will watch this team in and out uh day in day out both of these pitchers, we're talking about Yama, we're talking about Glasnow, they come into the season with a lot of question marks. Of course, Yama yeah. coming from Japan, never pitched in the big leagues. Glasnow, a lot of injuries over his career, I can understand that. So I, I almost enjoy the fact that uh, they're kind of the unsung heroes, I guess we'll say. You know, there's, There wasn't a whole lot of expectations, and so far... I mean, I would argue they're they're exceeding some of the early season expectations just because we knew Walker Bueller was going to be held back. We knew Clayton Kershaw would, I mean, at best still be a, a maybe in like August, September, something like that. And then you add in, you know, more injuries. You lose uh, Bobby Miller early. Yeah. You have... Uh, I love to walk everybody in the world, James Paxton. Uh, huge yeah. shout out to somebody like Gavin Stone stepping up. But even with Stoner, the people on the outside, they're not going to know him. They're not going to give him like that kind of love and all that. So uh, I, to, to I guess we'll say kind of piggyback that that takeaway of yours, I, I agree that um, the starting pitching has – it, it uh, I don't even know how to kind of button it up because I would say it doesn't it hasn't got the love that it deserves, but it's doing more than enough uh, for this team and it's it's been exceptional. It keeps getting better yeah. and now we get to uh, welcome Walker Bueller back here in yeah. the month of May. Yeah, and I you know I truly believe that all the questions that people had of of Tyler Glass now, just like you said, Tyler Glass now, Yamamoto, everything coming into the season, it's all fair. It's all valid. And then there's, if there's any concerns, then you can absolutely have them. Uh, there's a reason why pitcher contracts are so expensive. Pitching yeah. is expensive, uh, but they're showing it and they're on a roll right now. And that's my first point. First pick, first draft, uh, right at the first round, I'm taking that one, two punch uh, for what they're doing. And we're going to ride that out because looking around major league baseball, it's incredibly tough to find two consistent arms and they're both getting better and um, they're both getting more comfortable and they're here for the future. And you look back, uh, whatever it is, eight, nine months ago now, looking at that rotation that the Dodgers had entering the postseason, it is yep. just a world of difference. The the, the front office set man. out. Yeah, they set out to completely rebuild the the you know front end of the rotation, really the entire starting rotation. They did a hell of a job. And I get into my takeaway, uh, my yeah. takeaway number one here. It is essentially piggybacking off of you, but it is the Dodgers surviving the injury bug because as of the time we're recording this, they are, what is it? Uh, I think it's 20 and 12 because uh, we are a couple of days or one day, one game into May right now. Yeah. Um, they, 
most of the the bullpen they were expecting is missing. Uh, you still, like I mentioned, you don't have Bueller, you don't have Kershaw. Now you don't have uh, Bobby Miller. I got to look over here for some more of the names. You lose Kyle Hurt. Uh, you yeah. lose Nick Frasso before the season, who was somebody who was probably going to play uh, some sort of role for this team. But they just keep enduring and surviving. Gavin Stone figured out uh, what we. Ex- they were expecting of him last year, uh, stepping up, stepping into this this uh, the spotlight, and just kind of doing doing a, a perfectly acceptable job, if not better than that. Because I mean, his first few starts weren't the the prettiest, we'll say. Um, even somebody like like Landon Knack stepping up, stepping in, helping this team out yeah. through all of those injuries. As of right now, eleven dudes on the IL. Figuring out a way to navigate and put together a winning record uh, and, you know, be the best team in the National League West. It's pretty damn impressive. Yeah, and, and you know, to just to correct the word, you and I both had that wrong. It's 20 and 13. 20 That's and 13. Right That's right. Now. So, but forgot about the B yes, game. <laughs> they are doing they are doing a hell of a job. The starting rotation as a whole, I believe, they have a 3-4-8 ERA. That's even absorbing, you know, what they've done in their bullpen games mm-hmm. uh, and who's starting there. Uh they're, they're not exactly where I'd like in terms of bulk stuff, but that's to be expected with, you know, a few bullpen games mixed in there. Uh, some starts early on Yamamoto's early, like it's his first start only went one inning. So numbers are kind of skewed there, which is fine, but I believe that they're figuring it out. And it's, it's, it's tough when you have my, someone who I thought Emma Chien going into the year, was going to have that back end spot. Yeah. And then Gavin Stone earned that spot. It was it wasn't that a lot of people want to say, oh, he, you know, kind of kind of fell into his lap. No, he earned it. He pitched he really his did. butt off yeah. in spring training and went from there. Uh and to your point, we're like what well, you, you said earlier, we're getting a couple arms back. I don't know what Walker Bueller is going to be. Uh, I don't know how much we'll go into Walker Bueller just because I there's a few parts, a few ways to look at it. We'll we'll do it. I really have to talk about it because it's <laughs> such a, we're all fans and like we're all yeah. fans, but we're we're net we're analysts. So I want, as a fan, I want Walker Bueller to be good because of what we saw him do. True dog, like true. That was our. We see, we've seen Kershaw, but something about Walker Bueller, yeah. big right hander. You know, like f you, I'm gonna throw it down right, and you know, take the ball in the it was big an game. Aura. No matter, absolutely yeah. an aura to him, or exactly. So I want him to be good for that sense, and and I hope he can, and I I know he'll compete. And that's, you know, I love Dave's quote on that. I, people hate on Dave for that, but I love his quote on it. He's good. He, I like his compete. He'll go out there, toe the rubber, uh, but everything looking at it objectively and through it, like, I don't know how much his fastball is going to be there. I don't know how much his secondary stuff is going to allow it to play off of that. Uh, I've tossed it around with Blake Williams, you know, one of my really good buddies, our managing editor uh a db that i think he should ditch his four seamer altogether and become a like a sinker cutter guy uh but story for a different day we'll see yeah. how it goes but the like they will need to find the innings and that's where arms just like we spoke that james paxton's valuable gavin stone health is valuable uh it sucks that they lost kyle hurt because he has the ability to start yeah. games so the more years that go on we see the the, the troublesome thing with starting pitching availability uh, in which is truly remarkable uh, where they're at, that 348 collective ERA, and how thankful we are that they were able to lock up two big front in front yeah. of the rotation arms uh, as Clayton Kershaw is transitioning to a different part of his career. And they're trying to find out which of those prospects are going to kind of separate themselves into either middle of the rotation to back end of the rotation roles. Yeah. And, and you know, Got to throw Walker Bueller in there. Hey, he is coming back. They've missed him the last couple of years, but this is also at the same time his walk year. So he's pitching for his future in LA. He's pitching for that next contract. Is it a pillow contract? Is it, you know, something worth a lot of years and a lot of money, which maybe the Dodgers aren't as uh, keen on going in on, but you know, again, through it all to be where this team is at 20 and 13, uh, coming back home after a really, really good road trip where I I think it was every bit of a get right road trip for sure. uh, They needed to get out of LA, which usually you don't, you don't ever want your team to, it's never been like that. Yeah. Yeah. It's never been like that. It's it's always been the 180 the back. It's always been like, okay, they're at home. They're going to groove. And then they'll, they'll get it right. The home crowd, whichever. But I heard other players say it just like you did something about it. They all were just like, maybe we just needed to get out of LA. Hey, you know how it is. Sometimes you just need a road trip with the boys. You know, have a good time. Go out and have a steak dinner. (laughs) So uh, takeaway number two, there was, there was a, 
takeaways number one for uh, both of us. So you guys can see we yeah. we're going to be talking for sure. But what, what's uh, what's number two for you, my guy? Andy Pahez is a dog. Truth Andy Pahez is an truth absolute is rise. dog. Were you? So um, hold to, on one one second on that. Were you one of the guys who was kind of upset that they optioned him uh, so early in spring training, or were you uh, more of the the idea that yeah, you know what, it's a shorter spring training. It makes sense right now. No, it, it it made sense because they he had the ability to keep playing in those games. So it was just you know roster crunch stuff like that. Uh, from where he was at, it you know. You have to understand. People have to understand that there, when there are made guys in the major league roster making major league pay, uh, you give them opportunities first. And on a team like the Los Angeles Dodgers, where that roster is very crunched up there, yeah. there's not a lot of you know. <laughs> it, it doesn't. It's hard to understand that as a fan. You want it to be like, yeah, he's playing better. Put him in there. But it it th- there are there are stages. There are politics and things that have to go into it. There is a depth chart and and it sucks because it's, it's the same reason why I think it's Jose Ramos. Like I'm, if I'm, I'm remembering, yeah, he, the reason why, like, Oh, why doesn't he get run? It's just same stuff like that. Guys don't have tenure. They haven't done it for a while. They yeah. haven't faced this major league pitching. You go through that stuff. It's why Miguel Vargas took forever to, he was raking and Michael Bush, same, same stuff. Yeah. So you can, there's only so much you can do against triple a pitching before they have to call you up or they see some spark. But anyways, I was, I it was always cool. You want to see, it's just more so the shock value of reading that. Oh, he was optioned down or yeah. sent to minor league camp. Yeah. That, but it doesn't mean anything. At the but, time when he's hitting like 400 too. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. But <laughs> torches fans have to just remember that they yeah. can at any time. Like if your bell gets called, like that bell gets called, you got to answer it. So, uh, I have to preface it with all of this, that it's the same. I'll, I'll say this to the same of the Gavin Lux situation. Uh, but the other way around, Andy Pahez's ascension to where he's at and what he's doing currently uh, remedies a problem that they really had before the year uh, when they signed to Oscar that there were mold. There could have been multiple platoons in that outfield if they didn't sign to Oscar, Mm -hmm. but now Andy Pahez coming in here and kind of, I mean, is he, Clint, can you really do you, he's gained a foothold, right? Like you, oh, yeah. can you confidently say, yeah, I I mean, at this point it's the same, like uh, James Outman in his first month, uh, last yep. year that rookie the the month or rookie the yeah yeah rookie of the month nl rookie of the month Perfect. sometimes uh yeah he they didn't know what they were getting in that first month and they just kind of let him eat and he earned it and yeah. through the ups and downs we hope we don't get downs with pahez but yeah there's there's no way in hell they could option or send pahez away at this point he yeah very yeah, we'll firmly into, earned we'll, it. We'll, we'll, we'll get into those downs i've been i know people <laughs> over on, on db they don't really like me doing that too much but it's like you have to yeah. i can sugarcoat it paint it however you want but you always always have to from looking at it from an, like a, the way we do and what we are we you know we analyze this stuff we read these things and we look at the numbers that people don't always want to see i can talk about yeah. what can go wrong with pahez not real fast but it can <laughs> but uh you have to think how close this came to not happening if jason hayward doesn't get hurt does this opportunity ever spark up if chris taylor is hitting maybe a buck 50 does this op- yeah. does this ever happen like it you have to think about these things like this opportunity fell into his lap and he's not just barely taking it. Dave Roberts came out and told him that he was going to play every day. Mm-hmm. And they said he's going to get the majority of this stuff. And right now, among rookies, you know, heading into, you know, tonight, as I looked on, as I checked these numbers of all like MLB rookies, not just National League, 140 WRC plus, sixth in the league, <clears throat> 545 <laughs> slug, fourth in the league, 368 Woba, sixth in the league, with a 47.7% hard hit rate. All right. He's got terrific suit jacket game. He brought it tonight. I saw that. Incredible. If you haven't seen it, everybody go check it out. I believe Blake tweeted out on the DB on the DB Twitter. It's incredible. But he brings stability to the outfield. And he's punishing mistakes. We saw him against the only okay, here's the one thing, everybody. If you want to know what could go wrong with Pajes, it's not his quality of contact. That's through the roof. He's got he hasn't walked once. Not one time, which is a tool that he was awesome at in the minor leagues. So if for some reason his quality of contact takes a dip, he starts to get pitched harder, then we then we could be talking. But we saw we've seen him work counts. We saw him work Jordan yeah. Montgomery, work him, and then he punishes one. It's just he's doing so many things that you want to see out of a rookie bat. And he's he looks he He's comfortable, man. Uh, that's one of the things I did really, really take in uh, on that. Aura. Uh, <laughs> there's like that. another kid. Aura. Another kid. Right here, right now. With that aura. He 
absolutely is walking around like he belongs. You don't see the deer in the headlights. You don't see him any sort of missteps. Uh, you're seeing him kind of even like in the outfield. You know, I, I don't think there's enough love being shined on, uh, uh, shined upon that defense because he's playing a really good right field, a very yeah. solid center field, just kind of you know gliding out there, strong arm. He's showing all five tools really. He's running the base as well, and uh, you know I, I will always anytime I have an opportunity to kind of clown on the angel. I will I will take it and I just got to say thank again Artie Moreno for being an idiot and kind of nixing that deal where he would have been part of that trade to bring back a uh, Luis Rengifo and and uh, Jack Peterson about and that, Ross dude. Stripling would have been forget about that yeah I, I oh, man. <laughs> I'm pretty sure uh, I, I, I'm seeing more Angels fans really bringing it up on the Twitter these days. But, yeah, uh, at this point, I don't know that, that you can say Pajes is some sort of savior, but he's been an absolute, like, dog. He's been a weapon. He's been a steadying force in the bottom of that lineup that was, for lack of uh, friendlier words, trash over the first couple of weeks of the yeah, season. Yeah, man, very, very troublesome there. Like, Chris Taylor not being absolutely anything – uh, I don't like being, I, I, it's not that I'm being negative guys. It's pointing out the fact that players yeah. are struggling and it's okay to say that players are struggling. Chris Taylor is not doing one thing to, to provide any confidence there. I'm very happy that Kike Hernandez is, looks like he's coming around. Yeah. I know Matt, if he sees this, my boss, Matt Moreno, hope he's recovering, man. He just, uh, he just had a recent surgery, but he'll love that. I said this, the eye test is telling me that Kike Hernandez is playing better and it is. It looks like he's, you know, he's have he's putting game quality games together, and that's something that you that you can say, okay, there's some success working there. It's not just one hit; he's having condensed games where it's all looks like it's coming together. So that's, yeah. you know, if that wasn't happening, then I'd say, okay, then we still have, you know, two two parts that aren't movable out there, and we have to figure it out. But Pajes, Kike, you've got, you know, Teoscar, Altman, and we we'll get into him in a bit. Uh, but there are options out there where I can now relax on the outfield. <laughs> and that pause, just like you said, brings a stabilizing force next to Teoscar, who's playing every single day. And we don't want more than one platoon. So yeah. onward with those two, Pies, Teoscar, and move from there. And then they only need one spot to figure out. You know, I'm going to use uh, Kike as kind of a segue into my uh, next point, my next takeaway, here, buddy. which is – this team, this offense can be insane when close to firing on all cylinders. And we have seen that a little bit more. We're seeing it closer. Maybe there's like two misfires on a V8 right now, which still you're going to get a <laughs> decent amount of power or something like, like that. that. But Kike, um, I think a lot of folks might not really realize or, or even take into consideration that when the Dodgers signed him, you know, it was a kind of a late signing, we will say for sure. Spring training already underway. Had an off season where he had the the double sports hernia surgery, did yeah. not get into his usual routine, usual work, his usual, you know, uh cage work and all that. What we saw over the first couple of weeks is a guy still kind of getting his feet wet, getting his swing back, and and he looked a little lost. But right now we're seeing a, a healthy, a productive, a thriving Kike and playing everywhere and looking like, you know, we saw it at different points in his first tenure with the Dodgers, like he was enjoying it. But then, yeah, you get into 19, you get into 20. He's like, I really want to be an everyday guy somewhere. This is a guy who's enjoying being that dude who you can throw in left, throw in center, throw in right if you need to, play some third base when Muncy's not in there. And it's fun to watch him kind of, uh, you know, solidify the bottom of that lineup as well uh, alongside, you know, we got we to gotta shine a little love on Austin Barnes, 240 slugger, yeah, two, 240 hitter, and, and looking – Decent, getting on base, keeping the lineup moving, and that's all you got to do when you have a top of the order with Marcus Lynn Betts, with Shohei, middle name Otani, with you know Freddie Freeman, and also Will Smith, who I say is the most not underrated catcher but underrated player in baseball at the top of your order. It's a pretty damn good lineup, and uh, when – when you do get this, when you get that bottom of the order, kind of figuring it out and – it's fun to watch the, the Dodgers once again leading baseball and run scored. They lead an average 271 OPS 794 at the moment, and that's with the extended struggles of guys like Gavin Lux, like Chris Taylor, like James Outman. Those guys that you know they're struggling to hit above 200, really not hitting above 200, not even hitting their weight. It's impressive to see what this lineup can do, and I would I would argue it it gives me a lot more uh, excitement at. Uh, 
you know, to wait to like get to October already. I want to see them playing against the best teams in baseball and kind of putting some of those demons uh, of the last two, you know, Octobers behind them. Yeah, and and I think that we we man, we could talk. We could do a whole show just on what Will Smith has done. It's uh, insane, man. <laughs> yeah, the we knew he was a good player. We knew he was a good catcher, uh, but I don't think we really knew like, you know, until you've looked at his game and what he's doing extra this year is small things. I I've spoken with Blake a lot about this, that I've seen Will Smith, you know, do some things offensively that I haven't quite seen in recent years. I really have seen him, you know, be okay taking that pitch outside and shooting it to right field yeah, uh, and working those counts and really punishing mistakes He's done it in the past, but I don't think I've seen it at this clip that he just looks like such a veteran hitter. And at the point that he's got Freddie Freeman in front of him, he's in in Otani and whatever they're going to get on base as many times, but taking those opportunities really in stride and maximizing them. Yeah. Will Smith, I have to scramble and pull it up here. If you can save me on that, I need to pull up (laughs) what he's done versus left-handed pitching because it, it it's truly remarkable at what he's doing. I won't have to do it, but I won't have time to do it, but he's a top five hitter in the league against lefties. He might be number one in batting average against lefties in all of major league baseball. And it's a very big reason why he's carrying them offensively. And, and to, to some extent they're, they're similar and where they're at versus lefties this year, but it feels mm-hmm. like their, their problems haven't been as, as exaggerated. No. Uh, so it, you see what I mean? So yeah. like, that's another thing where I test is telling me they're playing a little bit better. They're playing a little bit more cleaner baseball outside of, you know, the rookie of the nationals blowing, you know, shutting them down. It's these, you know, these games. That, <laughs> yeah. But, we know those are always going to happen. Yeah. Rookie, those are just going to happen. It's a never, random, no, no name, yeah. you know, John Doe, that's going to come in and shove for seven innings. And you're like, Hey, get out of town. And, but it's, it's, they it feels like they're playing a little bit more complete baseball. And I think it's because of that big four. I think we can yeah. comfortably say it's a big four right now. Yeah. Will Smith, you lock him in and it's just, I, I he's, it's tough to say that, you know, yeah, top five catch, a top three catcher in Major League Baseball is a linchpin of a team with three other superstars. Yeah. But I really feel like just extending that lineup uh, is such a big deal for him. Having to to get a like solid quality of contact in front of two guys and Max Muncy and Teoscar Hernandez, who are huge K guys. So it just yeah. matters so much that Will Smith goes up there. And if he's in a spot to drive in runs to avoid them, just pitching around him to get to those strikeout guys. He's been taking those opportunities really in stride and and just for wherever he was at as a hitter, it feels like he's taken just gotten that contract and said, all right, I'm going to do even more. So yeah, I'm here. Exactly, man. I'm, I'm so with you on that. Like kudos to the offense. Big, big takeaway. And, and uh, another fun thing to me when we're talking about Big Willie style here is you, <laughs> I like that. you have three MVPs in front of him. Yet I would argue with anybody, I'd argue with the brick wall about him being the second most important hitter in that Dodgers lineup behind Mookie Betts. Obviously not hitting behind him, but you need Will to, like you said, he is the guy who's in front of these big time strikeout guys. He needs to do a lot of damage. If if Mookie gets on base, Will better drive him in because you might get a Muncie K behind him. So I just wanted to throw that out there. I, I feel like yeah. uh like like he really is the second most important uh piece of that lineup but it's more of like a one a two a and then two b is you know Shohei, and you got everybody else in right there i i also i wouldn't call it necessarily a brain fart because we we've talked about so many things but uh i mentioned barnes i did not shout out miguel rojas who's had a very nice start to this season settling into that yeah, role man. that the dodgers traded for him for uh before the 2023 season to be that every uh you know everywhere you need him around the field be a veteran leader and hey he's also doing some shit with the bat <laughs> yes i mean it brings that that you know transition straight into my my third takeaway uh he ties in there he definitely right does yeah uh and this is not one that's not so positive but it's one that is being remedied uh, same thing same thing that pies is doing but in other ways uh the gavin lux conundrum it's something that I uh, it's it's been unfortunate. It's created more of an issue than I think people realize. And then when the times we see Mookie Betts struggle at shortstop, we have to think that it's a problem that probably should have never happened. Uh, but if Gavin Lux just isn't comfortable being a shortstop and that's just where they're at, maybe it happens. But if they're comfortable with where he is at second, then that's where they roll with it. But the Gavin Lux conundrum, 
uh, has been a tough thing to really absorb because it's put Mookie Betts. Let's roll it back. It's peculiar that you take a superstar, 31 year old playing elite right before the season starts and says, you're playing shortstop. Yeah. That doesn't instill a lot of confidence to where, you know, Gavin Lux is at. It does not. That's not just a move they make because it's just like for funsies. Uh, yeah. It's something that they think that, yes, there's a problem here that we can't start the season with this guy. You cannot make a throw to first base, whatever. If you have the guys on the roster to do it, it's that's you figure it out. Right. Uh, but I would prefer them not to do it for a long period of time. I believe Mookie Betts is athletic enough to, you know, do it over a full season, but, you have to think where the Dodgers were doing. They weren't planning on that. They were going to say, we're putting you at second to take a load off your body. Yeah. So it's not <laughs> something that's ideal. So we can, we can lay the groundwork there. It's not ideal that what's going on between them, but Gavin Luck. Yeah, go ahead. I, I will say, I appreciate that because whenever I've kind of brought that up, I, I feel like people give me a side eye on that. Uh, you know, people will point to the numbers, you know, Hey, he's been one of the most valuable shortstops in baseball, but he also is what he's like fourth in, in errors or he has four errors. I don't know. I've, I don't have the stats in front of me at the moment, but um you know, the eye I'm test, I know where you're going. I've looked this up too. his, <laughs> his outs above average are not where they would like to be, but everybody, yeah. the only stat I see is DRS like defensive run save. That's it. So fine. Whatever. However you want to dice it. He's doing fine. Yeah. It's not he's ideal, doing but fine, fine, but we're talking about right now, you know, yeah. March and April, this is episode one of, of a, you know, six part, essentially mini series yep. or however many part, uh, part mini series of our report cards and talking about takeaways. And we are talking about, uh, right the first month, of the season where, you know, people are getting their feet wet. People are kind of settling into the season. You're pay playing the absolute best of the best in baseball. When you do yeah. reach October, when you do reach the world series. And, you know, if and I'm not saying Mookie Betts is going to cost the Dodgers a world series because he's the shortstop, because he, like you said, he's been perfectly fine at the position. Um, yeah. But there are probably better options in the long run. And, you know, he spent his entire off season working to be a second baseman like a baseman. And now, right now it's all on the job training. And again, he's passing it with flying colors, but at some point it is going to take a toll on his body. He's played every game. And, you know, again, I, I, I just a few minutes ago said he's the number one, he's the most important part of this Dodgers lineup, but if he does get hurt and, you know, he can get hurt anywhere on the field, but if something happens because of shortstop or we're all going to be like, uh, you know, people like yes, us, I think exactly. are going to be like, we told you yeah. so we told I'm with you, you so. <laughs> yeah. And I'm with you. And, and, and for where we're at right now, it's, it's going to, it's working out. Uh, but, and Gavin Lux is playing, you know, a stellar second base. And if all yeah. things equal, I've said it before that it, the, the problems can be isolated, but you can absorb one on in the lineup and that's okay. It's always that you can, there's, that's why you say, okay, at a certain point, your offense is good enough. You can absorb just having like a purely defensive catcher. But luckily right now, our offensive our catchers are playing, you know, very good at the plate, which is fine. So, but if you look at having, say your, if those outfield spots aren't all locked in, Clint, you know where I'm going with this. So it's like, if those outfield spots aren't a big issue, now you can just hyper-focus on where second base is at. Is there, yeah. are you getting your offense there? Uh, and if not, then fine. Is he playing good defense? Fine. You're okay having a defensive shortstop? Fine. All those things, if it's just one spot, you can yeah. absorb it. Yeah. And for right now, if Gavin Lux is going to be uber athletic and play a fine defensive shortstop, fine. But I need I need more out of him. And everybody, I don't care. People don't don't look at us critical about this. Go cry somewhere else. But I'm going to tell you right now, it's not good enough that a player in on the roster and he's a platoon guy now, which is even more That's, concerning. Yeah. He's he had a 465 OPS in the month of April. Not good. Like he's playing fine defense. Cool. He's in the first percentile barrel rate. He hasn't caught one all year. He's been getting, but he's been getting terrible calls to the plate. That's fine. But we're talking about a guy who's got a 289 expected slug. He's not doing anything with the bat. Yeah. He's not getting on base. I don't care how athletic you are. If you're not getting on base, it doesn't matter. But now I can simmer down. This is a topic that everybody has been talking about so much, man. It's just yeah. nauseating, but it's, it's a, it's a thing you have. It, there's no, not, it, yeah. it is a thing because you know, ideally you're trying to, I mean, we saw, we saw this team do this in spring training where yeah. they wanted to improve in their minds on the margins 
when and they had a guy in Manuel Margot. They traded him away because they wanted Kike Hernandez. They thought he fit that 26 man roster better. He fit the, the yes. 13 position players they needed uh, at that time better. Um, if somebody isn't performing, they probably shouldn't get as long of a leash as the team is trying to give them. And I had a, I was arguing for a while about this. And and again, you know, people would give me some crap about it, but. If you're coming back from injury and it's spring training and you're proving that you're not ready, your game is, you know, complete game is not ready to go, you should not be on the opening day roster. It should have been that simple. It it should have always been, all right, you know what, Keek, uh, our, our Luxie is going to stay here in Arizona and extended, extended spring training, kind of get his feet back under him again. He hasn't played baseball in over a year at this point. Miguel Rojas is going to be your opening day shortstop and you have Mookie Betts staying at second base and that would have been perfectly fine. They're trying to, to force Lux in the lineup um, and it hasn't worked so far. And that's not good for his psyche either because this is a dude who thrives. He lives and dies on those those mentals and he cannot be in a yeah. very – even even I, I will give him some credit. I, I put out a video uh, or I had a, a you know segment in one of the streams, uh, my streams recently where – I'm liking some of the at bat quality. You're seeing some changes. You're seeing him, you know, kind of take the bat off of his shoulder instead of doing that that you know the bat head uh, tilting down thing as I elbow my uh, microphone here. You're seeing some changes. You you are seeing harder contact. So maybe the month of May will be a little bit better for him. But still, we I wouldn't say suffered through, but we just watched an entire month where he was kind of i wouldn't say arguably or even uh obviously but he was not one of the 11 or 12 or 13th best uh 13 best people on that roster uh position yeah. player wise yeah and and it's it's tough uh it's tough so you know luxie has got to figure it out and it's hard like everybody you know some if you talk to anybody even the casual fan even you you need to come out of these things. It's incredibly hard to do it when you're only playing so often. Now you're a platoon guy, same stuff that Alman's kind of going through, but it's hard when you don't have every day at bats, but it's also tougher when there's somebody ahead of you. Uh, also when you have a 35 year old, who's very capable of playing <laughs> shortstop and Miguel Rojas, who's has a, you know, a three outs above average. He's got an expected batting average of 297, which he qualified because then he'd be up there with that, but he's not striking out. He's doing all the things that we saw Miguel Rojas do when he was in Miami. He was yeah. a very consistent bat. So they've got to ride this wave. And as long as he's playing well, you just have to ride it until the wheels fall off. I was saying that to, you know, uh, Matt, I was saying it to Blake. Uh, I know a lot of fans will appreciate this. It's good having a batting average guy or someone who's, you know, very under understands the value of not striking out and just putting the ball in play. Uh, and we know exactly what Miguel Ross is going to give yeah. the glove and you just raise that ceiling. So that's why for me, this is the the least like it's the takeaway, but for on my worry list, Gavin Lux's struggles are at the very bottom at the moment. Aside yeah. from the bullpen, we're not going to talk about it. <laughs> yeah. This aside is us bull, finding yeah. things to complain about. That's the whole, yeah, aside, that's, yeah. that's this exercise we're doing here. Yeah. Go yeah. On, like bullpen. Gavin Lux, Gavin Lux's struggles right now have, Calm down because I'm like now it's like Chris Taylor is doing his own thing and, uh, and Andy Pahez is coming to his own. So all the like you can absorb things as long as other things are going well. Yeah, and that's where I feel we're at currently, where it's a spot where let's Lux can figure it out. Uh, you know, Chris Taylor's struggle aren't so emphasized. So my biggest takeaway is they're absorbing those issues. Yeah. Beforehand, it felt like it was a tidal wave that it's like, God damn, like this bottom third in the order is too much. Like we can't do this. The second yeah. it gets past the sixth spot implosion like you might as well try to do whatever you can to turn the lineup over so now they're getting that length they're helping out the top and it's that's why you're seeing this offense humming it's yeah. all working together at the moment that's why they've made, just like you said they need a little bit of a break from dodger stadium yeah. that's where you're seeing this team work together so that's my biggest takeaway you what's your last one buddy my last one is funny enough uh it it's your last one uh <laughs> but or second to last one or whatever it was um it is later for us right now, guys, as we're recording. So bear with our brains. But uh, I was my last one is maybe Mookie Betts is a shortstop. <laughs> I had I set it up as a question to myself. Look, I, right now at the moment, he's he's I don't know if he's taking um, 
taking the task at hand and letting that kind of fuel his play. Um, I don't know if he's kind of fueled by the the failures of the last few uh, Octobers, which is something uh, David Vasse was on with us on Dodgers Territory on uh, Thursday and kind of mentioned that uh, when I asked him about you know Mookie Betts sort of success and him as a shortstop and all that. But whatever it may be, him playing shortstop has not been – uh, necessarily to the detriment of the team at the moment and i again it's it's we're talking about a dude who's hitting over at the moment 370 380 yep. whatever it is uh he could probably won't but could be somebody who challenges for 400 could be somebody who challenges Jeez. definitely to hit over you know 350 if all if even if he you know comes down just kind of play at this level or maybe i'm being a little too homery here maybe i'm being a little too optimistic but still he's uh, it's fun to watch him. He looks happy. He hated the outfield, uh, however For good he reason. was there. I, got I, bored, I, got, I guess. I you understand. Know? It, is, got it is a boring you know, spot, especially in right field. You don't get as much action out there. You know, I'm, I am a big-time uh, slow-pitch softball player, and I'll tell you, outfield can be <laughs> not all that fun because you're not in there in every single play. Mookie yeah. is somebody who really enjoys um, being involved in every single play, but I, I love seeing the fact that he, again, not necessarily – Right now, a detriment to the team as a shortstop. He's kind of maybe being a pretty decent shortstop, and it's some sort of part of of the pie in putting together this insane season he has, which I think MLB Network put out a stat that he's on pace for like a 15 win above replacement season, which Nuts, is absurd. Man. He's not going to keep playing at that that rate, but still, we talked a lot about Mookie already. That was my thing. I was just like, no, 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 it's not a problem, but it's not the best I get case it. scenario we're aligned in and and yeah. there's you know stumbling upon you know data and whatever people want to do it it might be coincidental but it's a larger sample and Mookie's at shortstop so in 46 plate appearances when Mookie Betts is playing second base he's got a 155 WRC plus a 875 OPS you want to guess what his WRC plus is and double the almost yeah almost triple the plate appearances I don't have a number. I just do not. 239. Wow. He's got a 1201 wow. OPS when he's locked in at shortstop. So there is something to that, that just like you said, he's taking this task really too hard. He, Juan Toribio told us that Mookie Betts is showing up earlier to the stadium than he ever has, hours before he usually did. Mm -hmm. He's almost got to double the walk rate than strikeout rate when he's at shortstop coincidental you can call it whatever it is there's something with his psyche yeah. and something in his preparation that he's as locked in as he's ever been if he you know if october is pissing him off and he doesn't <laughs> like the fact that i said yeah mookie bets you know he's sucked the last two octobers whatever it's not it's just what it is he'll tell you it himself just because he said they they drive benzes too like it mookie bets understands that it's you know it sucks it sucks losing it sucks when you're a superstar player and you didn't perform in October on the biggest stage, to, you know, but there's something to it. And right now, everything says that he's more locked in when he's playing shortstop. He's probably locked in all the time, but something is clicking. Something else is happening. And he's got a 509 on base when yeah. he's playing shortstop. You can't argue it. He could do this. If he wants to do this, I don't care. If Dave wants to say he's our shortstop, <laughs> I'll say, you got it, Dave. Like, I'm, I'm fine does. with it. Yeah. Screw the plan. Sorry. Like, screw it. I'll stop saying it. If they tell me that he's not going back to second base and the optimal thing is to lock Mookie Betts in a shortstop for the rest of the year until something else clicks or at least till the deadline, you got it, Skip. I'm dialed. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. But, you can't know, argue it. I can't argue it. I, I have not. I have no way to, to change it. This yeah. is one of those things, kids. It tells you there's more to baseball than uh, you know just the numbers and just the expectations and all that kind of stuff. Even though the numbers Something. in here are telling us that somebody plays better here than they played there and and there's something to playing baseball or playing a sport and being happy about your job when exactly he very clearly right was there. not and, and i love what you say there uh juan Taribio, of course does a great job covering the dodgers for mlb.com of course friend of the show over there at dodger blue saw that interview great stuff uh with you guys there but um the fact that mookie is showing up we looked before uh, I don't want to. Yeah, we've we've seen it. We've seen the the kind of people. I don't want to say devolve into this or whatever, but talking about all of the outside interests for Mookie, talking about yeah. the bowling. You know, he's got 
and and kudos to him you know props to him i we don't do this 24 7 we don't want to just do the one thing and then go home and sit there until it's time to do it again have your interests outside of baseball that's fine but if he's showing up earlier that tells you he's enjoying it he was before somebody who wanted to be home he wanted to be with the family and that's cool that's that's all on him that's what he probably should be doing as a as a you know father of two and all that kind of stuff but um right now if he's enjoying it it's showing it's showing on the field and he wants uh, to be better. And, and that's what you want to see he wants to be better man and, and you know shout out to mookie he's he could he's doing he is a complete 180 from what ronald acuna is doing and he just won an mvp <laughs> and we don't see him changing i'll say this and i'll say it on here and i hope it gets clipped and put somewhere mookie Betts goes on to win an mvp playing shortstop it'll be one of the biggest feats in major league baseball in the last 20 years Absolutely. Like I mean, it won't even, as a 31 year old who's won multiple gold gloves, has one of the most accomplished right fielders, he could coast to a, a Hall of Fame from where he's at trajectory wise. Uh, he could have stayed out there. But he said, uh, you know, whether he was bored, I don't care his reason. It's not our it's not our damn business to what it, what the reason is. If he wanted to do it, if it was optimal for his longevity under contract, whatever. The fact that he said, I'll play shortstop and he's doing it at a level offensively, staying there. And if he maintains that health, one of the biggest feats in the last 20 years of major league baseball shout out to Mookie man hell of a month that's it's just yeah he's 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 not allowing a problem that could have been something to be even worse yeah we we were definitely starting to get a little scared there when when that whole week where Dave was like uh you know Lux is going to figure it out Lux is our guy and then you know maybe maybe not Lux and then no, this is permanent for now. Oh, <laughs> the, yeah, the we ch- were freaking out. I was, I was, I remember I saw, I was at, I was at work and I was just like, I saw him doinking throws and I was like, no shot. Yeah, Are we doing yeah. this, man? Like, we just had <laughs> spent a billion dollars and we're the biggest story is if Gavin Lux can, you know, mm. shot put a ball to first base. And I'm like, what are we doing, dude? <laughs> hey, admittedly, ah. it was a lot of pressure on the kid, but uh, hoping the best for him. But I like the take, man. I like the take. I, I, I buy, I buy in on uh, MVP Mookie in uh, 2024 because I think you know, it's about right. time we get a, uh, an MVP out of Mookie. You know, he's been here five years now. Just make it happen. Barely just missed out just, twice. Just missed out. Exactly. Should have probably, I, I would have given it to him in 20, but maybe I'm a homer. All right. So we've talked that we got our takeaways. Now the whole thing, it says it on my screen here. Uh, you don't see it. You're, you'll see it in the edit afterwards, but we have the little, I have a line. It says Dodgers report card, March, April, do you have uh, some grades to hand out here? Because I feel like we could uh, break down uh, each of the little you know, individual pocket of this team and, and grade it out. And you mentioned you didn't really want to dive into the bullpen, but here's a, here's a cheater way that you can um, show some love <laughs> to the bullpen in its current state. What do you yeah, grade them? I'm going to give them – it's gonna people are gonna say I'm too critical on this, but it's just for a couple obvious reasons. Uh health is one, but I'm gonna say they're gonna get a, a C. Yeah. I'm giving them a C. That's what I got. Because yeah, at at certain points and it could trend down, it could get worse because of where we're currently at in their health. Again, you know, Joe Kelly kind of tweaked something. We've seen Kyle Hurt go down, so it's another option that I really liked. I know Blake Williams said that he's like, Yeah, you got you know, Kyle Hurt might be the third most valuable reliever in that bullpen and he's down. So for where they're trending, it could get worse, guys. And I don't think yeah. that's too critical. Like their overall numbers, they've been better. They've been better. Like let's let's put that on there. Like Alex Vesia, who's another one. I know. Well, I don't know if we have to, you know, go back and we have our, <laughs> our our takeaway. Well, we have our. Hold on. What is it? It was our. You had our biggest surprise. Like we'll get into Vesia's. So I'll just tease that. That's my biggest surprise. Uh, but if you just strip away Evan Phillips, you have to rely on Daniel Hudson. Uh, like Nabil Chris Matt, like we're talking about like a very thin line. I don't know Nabil Chris Matt. I said, yeah, I, want, I was just trolling that he was going to be my guy, but it's just like, they're you in gotta a very, have one. you always got to have, have one. I yeah. do it every year. People yeah. got to stop I, acting like I don't do this every single year. Like I Joe Kelly, I did so this. I bought his jersey it. right when he got signed. I always pick <laughs> one. Like, like I always pick some random, like Kevin Quackenbush last year. I was like, yeah, give me the quack, like some random. Yeah. So, Mike, I would say my guy is usually a position player. Uh, I famously, I think it was two seasons ago, went all in on Jake Lamb for no reason, just because it was fun. That's fire. You got to have you it. Know, you want to know the most random one? And this is going to fit right in line. If somebody wants to troll me that, oh, you know, you're just back, <laughs> back walking it. You know, I was a Logan Forsyth stand, <laughs> hardcore. 
because I was like, it's the most generic dude. He's pretty Just generic. give me yeah. some big game Forsyth. And guess what, guys? He had some big knocks, so I don't want to hear it. But our the bullpen right now is in, in until Blake trying to gets back, Bruzdar's not back. The month of April was a roller coaster. Joe Kelly didn't figure it out for a bit. Bessia didn't have it figured out until post Minnesota. Uh, JP Fireisen got yeeted real <laughs> early on. Now he's back. And, yeah. and Michael Grove, they don't know. They, they're, they're, I, they can't figure everybody out. Everybody knows role. it. Yeah. Every, yes, thank you. Everybody knows it. So Daniel Hudson's still working through the kinks here. He can't figure out how to stop giving up the long ball in, in weird times. And Dave Roberts decides, hell, you know, screw it. We're going to use Evan Phillips in a, up by four runs. And then he's unavailable for an extra inning game. So multitude. C, yeah. C grade, leave it there. Uh, I they'll patchwork it. I talked on your show the one time I came on that I said, I'm going to let the bullpen be because they usually always figure it out. And yeah. I truly believe that they'll, they'll find the innings and they'll find the success somewhere. Yeah. But if anything, where it's at now, C. I'm going to upgrade it to a, to C plus only because of how exceptional Evan Phillips has been as the, by the way, guys, this is your Dodgers closer. Cause we had so many people, crazy, so what? many articles. Guess that? Uh, uh, who's who, wait, who's going to be the Dodgers? Who's going to be the Dodgers closer? It was always no. Evan Phillips. Like you don't, you don't need a de facto closer, but it's Evan Phillips. You're talking about one of the best Evan relievers Phillips, in baseball. Man. Uh, you, I, I know you're, uh, just talking to you here. I know you're one of those, uh, you, you love your numbers. You're going to be a stats nerd a little bit. I love looking at, uh, this Dodgers baseball reference page and looking at the bullpen and just looking at the absurdity between like ERA and FIP because the guys that have the good ERA save for mm. Phillips, the, the FIP is just like, no, fuck you, you don't, what is wrong with you? You're a garbage human. And then, yeah. you know, the guys who are actually not performing. It's like, no, no, uh, it's just, you know, bad luck right now so far. So it's kind of funny. We know, I agree with you. It will normalize. It is what this team does. Uh, expecting to get Blake Trinan back uh, on uh, during this homestand. But even with yeah. Trinan, it's like, we haven't seen this guy in a hot minute. So you do worry very much about uh, how, how, you know, how much you run, you're going to get out of this guy. Don't rely a whole lot on Blake Trinan. So yeah. C plus there for uh, my bullpen. Let's talk about the starting rotation. I think we'll both be a little bit more positive about it, but only barely a little bit more because I'll, I'll open it. It's almost, it's like a C, but it's also a B, but it's also incomplete, but it's also an A. Like I'm so all over the place on Glad the starting rotation that. because it's just, it's, if we're grading on a curve, <laughs> you know, you got two guys way up there and then uh, you know a couple other dudes who are just kind of holding their own right now, holding down the fort until somebody like Bueller can come back and hopefully do something. And somebody like Kershaw maybe comes back and um, becomes, you know, whatever next version of Clayton Kershaw is with now a hopefully fully attached shoulder. I'm going to go, this is going to surprise it, for where they're at, I'm going to give them an A. I know, I know it's big time praise, but I'm going to give them an A. They're 10th in the league. They're they're dealing with a multitude of injuries. Like I want to go gonna, to your school. Yeah, I'm going to give I'm going to give them an A. I I just I feel I feel like they've for the when they when they, we were saying they weren't giving them enough length, they started to. They were like, "Where are we going to get these innings?" Landon Nack comes in, figures it out. Fips are high, but vibes are high. <laughs> yeah. It, we but, ride on vibes. Let's go. We're, we're, we're right there. We're right there. <laughs> I, I can't really knock, you know, they're going out and performing. You've got the one, two right at the front, and that fits right in line with my narrative. I'm all about narratives this year. I don't <laughs> care. Everybody can hate, whatever. I'm a, you know, but for they've got the one, two, you're going to be able to get production somewhere. You're going to be able to get it with Landon Knack. He's coming in doing that, but I can't really argue with three five three three nine four FIP. Like they're getting enough. Like yeah. it will it will start. Like you 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 you've heard Dave about like talk about it. You're getting a little bit more length, and we see all that happens. It's it all works in one. Yeah. Um, but what, when you've seen them go, re do really well on this recent road trip, it's because you're getting some length out yep. of that starting rotation. And then the bullpen isn't under so much pressure to be perfect for those, you know, rest of those innings, say four, four innings. That's tough for them to do right now, four or five innings. So it's all working hand in hand. And I think the starting rotation has done an exceptional job there. Uh, and I know I'm supposed to look at the whole month and I am. <laughs> But I'm letting you like just like you said, this last road trip was such a feels like such a different look. It really, I agree. That it kind of won me over big time on a lot of the stuff that they've been doing. That you know, yes, they'll be able to find those innings somewhere. Like you know, Yamamoto last now 
they're finding these spots to really, you know, elevate these guys and it's elevating the play and it's kind of working hand in hand. So if you want me, if anybody in the chat's going in the, in the comments are going to be like, ah, whatever, you're just fluffing up the rotation. You want me to say B, B plus, make you feel better. How B plus, this? but I'm sticking to A minus. Okay? I'm going to, yeah, I'll help a you minus. out. It's, it's A minus, but it's also the only A minus that has a, you know, see me after class. I think that's, that's kind of your grade right there. That's what it feels like. Sure. <laughs> a little, yeah, I'm with a, you. a little bit of extra work afterwards. Like, you know, what's going on here? You know what? We both, I, I'll, I'll, I'll bail us slightly on this one because I completely missed him uh, in my brain while we're talking about it, but we can really put him in the middle of both rotation and bullpen. Ryan Yarbrough has been uh hasn't done anything exceptionally great hasn't done anything exceptionally bad he's been perfectly what this team has needed uh over this great. first month plus of the season he's hilarious like he's it's just a guy that can he's a change of pace dude yeah. you bring him in right after and for 87 <laughs> It just it, it just makes no sense. It, it it makes sense, but it doesn't make sense. He because he's all of course he's always liable to go up there and and lay one in and have the outing like he did at the beginning of April and you know get smacked around a little a little bit by the Giants and that's gonna happen. The dude just like you said, the dude throws you know like what you know eighty like upper eighties like yeah. nine like low you know so it's like what are you expecting out of him? But he's done exactly what you need. He's a change of pace. He's not gonna strike many guys out, but he's gonna go up there miss barrels and do his job. And he's going to be good at it. So it's like, I wasn't surprised. I know somebody, would people are just like, oh, do you put him in the rotation? No, no. you let him be what he's doing. Yeah. Like he's not, you don't want that type of arm to go out and get, you know, pencil him in every fifth day or sixth day in our case uh, and, and say, yeah, he's, he needs to be, you know, a long, a longer, you know, a stretched out guy. That's just not going to work for him. Let's find a good spot for him. If he can go out there and pitch to a, not a soft spot in the lineup, but if he yeah. finds a rhythm, you get him in after, you know, a starter and you've got a little bit of a runway, let him go two innings. And if he's got another in him, let him go three. And just like we've seen him, I think four or five times he's gone four plus. So it's valuable. And right now he's pitching to a three ERA, rips in the four, four, seven. So <laughs> let's not, let's just keep it right there, but they're getting outs, man. Like they're getting, yep. they're, they're, they're navigating it. So pitching staff, Starting rotation, I think we can pencil him in because we kind of know he's going to give you bulk. Yeah, I'll pencil him in there and yeah, B plus, whatever, B plus. Yeah, he's he's uh, again done everything that this team needed and more, and maybe a little less, but it's mostly and more. Um, infield, infield's another one of those ones that's easy and hard at the same time because there's it's just so much like uh, what am I looking at? This uh, we'll call it diversity in the success of uh you know this this uh this infield unit it's gonna, be, it's gonna be one common denominator i think between us it's just gonna be gavin lux and i think that let's if we'll just i'm gonna say b b plus it would be an a ah uh, yeah b plus we'll say b plus because max muncie is exactly who he is freddie freeman started to really come around mookie betts mm -hmm. is the best hitter in in the world uh, and Gavin Lux is the only one, but they're figuring that out with proper rotation. So I'm yeah. going to say B plus it would be an a, if Gavin Lux was hitting anywhere near the Mendoza line. Uh, but you know, it's that until further notice. So same thing, see me after class. Then we can talk <laughs> about why you got that negative mark, but B plus, And I think that's fair. I think that's really that's, fair. That's fair. Uh, with a big, with a big, bold, triple highlight, Mookie Betts right at the top. And he's, he's be doing a lot of carrying and Freddie Freeman's looking fine. He's starting to figure it out. Power stroke hasn't really been there, but he's working to it. Max Muncy's working to it. He's still a top 20. I think he has, I think the last time I saw him, he was like 21st in the league in WRC plus all clicking together. These guys are on par. The veterans are doing exactly where they're at. Yep. Some better than others. Uh, and so it's like, we know what we're getting out of them. So if you want me to be, not be critical and toss <laughs> if, on the days that Miguel Rojas play, if you want me to say that, then it's an A. If Miguel yeah. if Gavin Lux is starting, it's a B, like B plus. Eh? But if it's Miguel Rojas, it's an A. Yeah, and uh, I think so. I, I I settle in at a B because I really like the new look, uh, of, you know, platoon there at second base. Yeah, you know, I would prefer Mookie Betts to be. We already talked a whole bunch about. It. I would prefer he be the starting second baseman, and they have some sort of elite shortstop. But that is not what this team has. But what this team has and what it's putting forth is is a B to me because uh, I I really like Miguel Rojas at, too, at second man. base because. That dude has a cannon, and he's quick. He is really yeah. quick, which is more – to me, it's more useful at that keystone for, for turning double plays so he can get that ball and get rid of it quick. We, we saw it in the two games uh, where he was the second baseman um, there. In, he's just uh, slick, too, yeah, man. He's, he's slick. just he's slick. He's fun to he looks, watch. 
He looks he looks like he's playing like he feels like at a like a really comfortable spot in him at at, at this point in his career. You know, I, injuries he's dealt with lower leg stuff coming into each season. Last year was more exaggerated than this year. Mm. Uh but he looks like he's got his legs under him. He's looking really good. We've seen him a little bit of pop, which is nice. And that's going to carry it. So uh, whatever we get out of it, I know was, I was joking around that, you know, run him till the wheels fall off. And I think you do. <laughs> I think, you know, you don't know how much he's got left in the tank. And he's in the, he's he's playing like he's a very viable piece and a valuable yeah. piece. And I think that they, they need to exaggerate that. You can't run him every day, of course. I understand you need to give him days off and all that. But we've seen them experiment with him at second base, third base. Get him in the lineup. Keep him in the lineup. You're raising that floor when you have him there, and let Kike Hernandez roam the outfield like it's. So let's let's keep Miguel Rojas in there as much as possible without you know doing too much. And I think that just raises the floor and the grade on the infield for me so far. Right on. I, I, I would add a little bit to Max Muncy, but I'm going to save that for my most uh, surprising thing, uh, my one big surprise. So spoiler alert, right there. Spoiler alert. I'm going to combine uh, outfield and DH, and I think. Um, I don't know. I don't. I don't have a, a strong sense. I feel like you would be. You would feel pretty positive about it, just because you have two regulars, and if we're mixing Otani in there, Shohei being very good at his job as the DH, but you have two regulars yeah. now with Pajes and with Teoscar Hernandez. That to me, it feels like they've done a, a very, very fine job since the second week of the season, or since Pajes, you know, kind of clicked. What's your grade? I want you to give me yours first. Right, you got to dump. dump. I, I, you know, I got to go for this crew. I got to go an A minus. I, I would argue, you know, I, I think people are going to give us crap or give me crap because that's, it feels like a high grade just because James Outman does look lost. There, There's a massive hole in his swing where usually lefties like absolutely punish a ball that, that down and in pitch, he just swings over it and it feels like he's walking to the plate constantly 0-2. Um, so that's a little bit of an issue there, but Kike brings up him, him, his resurgent brings the value overall value of that outfield up. And what Pajes is doing really brings the value up there. And Teoscar Hernandez being in there every day, being a slugger, he has struggled a little bit over his last you know, two weeks or so, but still he's a steadying presence and giving the team what they more than what you would have expected because you didn't expect them to go out and also sign Teoscar Hernandez in the off season to a one year deal. So I love what I'm seeing out of these guys and Shohei Otani doing what Shohei does. Um, eventually going to do more of what Shohei does because he will figure out how to hit with runners in scoring position again. But yeah, that's what I got. Yeah. I mean, combining them all together, Shohei, uh, People are gonna get mad. I give him an A minus. I know he's ripping everything off, but we it's it's a conversation that has to be had about him with runners in scoring position. It's a thing. Like he he would he's performing at an insane rate, but it, once he gets back to career norms, preface this with all of this, everybody. If you're watching, I understand. He will be fine. <laughs> he will be fine. I don't like saying that because but I it's something that, yes, I get it. But for right now, it's worth a conversation that there's something going on and that the Dodgers are aware of it, that he's pressing a little bit when the runners are on base. And we've seen it a couple times, like a couple at bats, you see him like even if he's flinching at a pitch way out of zone, he's doing it. So it's a conversation. So I, I, it's hard for me to combine. So I'm going to say Shohei gets an A minus. He's lighting the world on fire, but there is something he has to figure out uh, to the outfield. Uh, that your grade was with all them included. Yeah. Is that right? Okay. Yeah. So I'm going to keep, I'll, I'll, I'll keep it true to the rankings and that I'll, <laughs> I'll separate it that I'm going to give it, I'm going to give the outfield uh, a B That's for fair. that uh, James Altman right now. I stumbled, like it's not stumbled. I just looked into some stuff. I nerd stats this and, and, you know, <laughs> and just, I found some very glaring things. You know, Tay Oscar is who he is. He's a slugger. He's, you know, to, to that thing. There are guys in there, they're that are in major league baseball that just drive and runs. They're going to go up there. They're going to whiff a lot. He's doing it a little too much. Uh, but hopefully that figures itself out. Don't know when, but it, it hopefully it does. But Andy Pajes raises that floor, gives them an everyday starter. We're going to do it until it's not, until the league catches up with him and he's able to catch up with them. So yeah. we're going to rhyme that. So now you have two spots. So now we're going to the third. Now you're getting James Outman in a platoon role uh, with Chris Taylor. They are kind of at, if you want to just say they are both nixing themselves out and giving them a negative, then fine. And that's okay because he has a 540 OPS and he's not doing anything to make me feel like, yeah, he deserves everyday run because he doesn't. Uh, but what's really crazy is when I looked at when he's ahead in the count versus behind in the count. And it's some of the most insane splits I've ever seen. So when 
James Alman is behind in the count. Mm-hmm. He's got a 111 batting average with an OPS of 357. And that's in a pretty hefty sample. When he's right. behind or when he's when he's ahead in the count, he's got a 375 average with a 1208 OPS. That's I uh, don't get it. That's that's it's, uh that's pretty insane. It's crazy. Yeah. <laughs> so it's like as long but if you watch his at bats, like I, after I saw that, I was like Get ahead in the count, James, and we'll see what happens. And <laughs> the then he goes, oh, one, Adam. yeah, I was sitting there like, and then he goes, oh, one, oh, two. And I was like, you know, you know, damn, what are we doing? Like shit, like it's, it's what can now it's tough. So I, I he's a one, a, a one class, one, a class and getting, if he's ahead in the count, he can punish something, but he's having real, a lot of trouble. I, I really want him. I told Blake, I said, Hey man. And a lot of the people in chat, I said, Hey, what if he just becomes like Corey Seager? And goes up there, and that one pitch you get right at the beginning, if it you just swing through it. If it's 0-1 after you swing and you know try to rip one, <laughs> who cares? But that those get, that type of get stuff. Your money's it, worth. Yeah. Yeah, that type of stuff is glaring enough where okay, there's a conversation here. How can you if you're so if you're not good when you put yourself behind in the count and really how to battle that? Because his his batter profile is not where he's gonna go up there and just swat stuff away and, and swat stuff away until he gets a better pitch. I don't think any of we, I don't think you've seen it. I don't think I've seen it. He's just not there yet, unless it's like very specific at bats. But seeing numbers like that, there's something to it that these teams know get ahead and he's going to get himself out. So, like, it's, it's pretty glaring. Like, his strikeout rate, I think he's got like 17 strikeouts and 36 at bats when he's behind in the count. So, I mean, like, of course he's behind in the count. So, it's just <laughs> how it goes. But he, he needs to figure out a way to get ahead or he needs to punish stuff early on. And then we can have a different conversation that we might have three viable outfielders. And the only thing they're doing is having to find a platoon against lefties. That's my rant. And it's the stuff that's like, it's not, I can't fix it, but it's stuff that they're probably like, hey, James, how can we, you know, buddy, hey, let's, you know, have a yeah. seat, have a seat right yeah, here. Let's, let's figure let's this start. out. Can you yeah. go up there and just start daddy hacking? Just G hack on your first or pitch. swing, man. Because you know, every, every other team, they're, they're doing their scouting report, they're doing their, their meetings before the game, and they're circling James Altman. Just, just whatever you do, just throw him a first pitch strike. Get ahead. That's all you got to do. That's all you got to do. Get ahead. He's out. And, and He's out. What is it? Almost nine times out of ten, it's going to help you out in that at bat. Crazy man, yeah. So it's like that's so it's for to the outfield. That's it's it's a conversation that that third corner spot or third wherever they're playing is uh, something that they need to address. Uh, because just imagine how much leash I have to ask you. It's not not this is not an April question. Uh, this is how much leash does Chris Taylor get? You can say TBD. You don't know because it's a hard thing. It's really it's, a difficult thing to under to come to terms with. Th- this is this is one of Dave's guys. He gets all yeah. of the leash in the world. Plus, this is somebody who's owed thirty million dollars or something million, like that. Yeah. If they were to DFA him or whatever, uh, no other team is going to pick that up if he's DFA'd. So yeah, he would stay in the organization because he's not going to pass on thirty million dollars. But uh, I, Dave has a way of kind of almost always being right unless it's you know decisions in the postseason uh when it comes to the bullpen here and there but what does he always say he always says like i trust this guy i trust the the past performance um, in the spot he, here i trust him in the spot here he's gonna figure it out and and you know dave uh dave will say that about chris taylor you know, we know Dude, right now it's worked yeah we yeah. know and we know right now chris taylor uh, ct is trying to undo an off-season swing change that probably yeah. was ill-advised and you know, there's a lot that goes into that. Maybe you give him another few weeks. Maybe that you know we have that that 150 at bats uh, for Gavin Lux. Maybe there's some sort of soft number on CT where if he doesn't start to figure it out, um, you know that ankle or some sort of calf really starts to look uh, hurt on him. You get that phantom IL. Shh, don't don't be watching this, Rob Manfred. But that's always oh, in there. Do you, do you envision a world where there's uh, no more Chris Taylor on this uh, Dodgers team this year? I mean, no, I don't see it this year. I, that'd be a really tough thing for me. He's not, he's not trace Thompson. That's, it's not like that type of thing where it, it's, it's, I wish I could laugh at it, but it's like, it's a it's a, it's someone who's so mechanically, you know, based in their swing, the defense is played and to his yeah. credit, like to his credit, I, you know, I don't like cussing. Am I okay to like, I don't like, oh, yeah, shitting yeah. On, I don't like shitting on Chris Taylor. 
Like I don't, I, it doesn't bring me joy. I don't do, I don't like doing it, but it's like when something's glaring, it's, it's, you got to talk about it. That's yeah. why we're here. It is. It's why we're really, why we're here. The, the, but, the whole point of what we're doing right now is having these conversations yeah. about things, just throwing it out there, throwing it into the ethos and maybe something sticks for some people and we sound like we're smart and other things yeah. we're like, Hey, don't, don't listen to that one. Yeah, yeah, and dunk, <laughs> yeah, dunk, Duncan on Chris Taylor is not what it is, but it's, it's that he, his, his struggles are so exaggerated at the plate. Uh, and it sucks to see, and it's tough to see because he's been here for almost a decade and that's hard yeah. for me to understand too. It's pretty crazy <laughs> that he's been here for almost a decade. I know I'm, you know, uh, it's crazy, uh, Get older. but his defense, his defense is continuing to play and to his credit, that's what it is. And to, you know, Gavin Lux, Chris Taylor, their defense is continuing to play. And I'm very happy about that. And it's something that we can, you know, tip our cap to both that they're both, if they're going to be here, they're both finding a way to make themselves valuable to the team. And that's something that nobody can dunk on them for. Mm -hmm. And that's something that's not like, you know, they're, they're making ill-advised errors and it's like, you know, <laughs> there's the use the, like the value to the team is a complete negative. And once the Dodgers start to see negative returns on anything, that's when that happens. It's like Carl Crawford, stuff like that. The dude was a clubhouse. You know, I don't know if he's a clubhouse issue. issue I can't speak to that, but offensively it became terrible. Like he wasn't playing great defense. It just became an all around issue. And it's better sometimes just get those players out. But those are two gentlemen that are not negatives to the clubhouse. They are yeah. both clubhouse guys. They've been there. They've done everything the organization has asked. They are, they are, you know, Chris Taylor, they brought in fixed. You can say homegrown. I don't care. Uh, <laughs> I mean, Gavin Lux, almost. Yeah. Yeah. Gavin Lux homegrown. He's been here. They've earned that right. I don't see them getting rid of them. No. I don't think that's in the cards, like unless some trade happens, but I, it's just, they're doing enough and they're doing this again, exactly the same thing. They're doing what's been asked of them. And, and, and to what's going on with Chris Taylor, uh, if his defense plays and that's your, your fifth outfielder, great, like fine. Like that works for me. It does. It truthfully does because not everybody's going to be a star. And at the end yeah. of all these arguments, we're arguing, arguing, <laughs> arguing with the back spot of the roster, you know, and it sounds ridiculous, the, but you diagnose it all. The, the, cause when we we're talking earlier about Lux, the idea was, or, or the kind of thought that we both sort of settled on or you settled on. And I agreed with is Andy Pa has hitting coming up and hitting kind of masked that sort of issue masked the yeah. Lux issue a little bit. And it, he did the same for Chris Taylor. So for the, both of those guys sake, either they need to figure it out or Pa has needs to keep on humming. That's yeah. that, that's what I'll say. The last one we had on the report cards was bench. I feel like we've already kind of established a whole lot of thoughts on the bench here. Uh, uh, CT's a problem. Kike pretty good. Uh, wh whatever the tandem who's on the bench between Rojas and, and Lux um, offers some defensive value, and we need Lux to start running into a ball a little bit more. And Barnes has been perfectly adequate in his uh, once a week job on the team. If you were to give him a grade, what is that grade? D plus. I like it. D uh, plus. I don't think they have anybody there that instills fear in any like <laughs> platoon pitcher, anything. I don't think anybody goes like Kike cool. Like Kike will go out and whatever, but yeah, Kike is fine. Kike is the one carrying that D, but my, my grade is to the letter of, when we need to bring a pinch hit bat in of those guys, who are you going up there saying, yeah, he's going to blast one. Yeah, like, I don't really... see anybody that has any <laughs> position. It's, it's different than in the past. It's really different than in the past that it's not like it's different without Jason Hayward, because at least Jason Hayward would be, uh, you know, he'd be able to power against a righty. If Kike was pure, you know, position splits against a lefty, it'd be different. But it's that Kike's had reverse splits. He's been doing stuff differently. Austin Barnes is a light hitting catcher who, you know, and it's just, it's not the same. It's different than it's been in the past. They don't really have the deepest bench, but they've got versatility there. Yeah. And they've got guys who in, when they get four at bats a game, they might get a base hit, two bait, two singles, but nobody out there on that bench. Who's really, if you wanted to tell me, you know, versatility wise, sure. They get a B, but in terms of, are they going to go out and have, uh, you know, Dave can just run pure platoon where it's, yeah, their bench is valuable enough to, to, feel adequate no matter where they're at just as long as it's a, in a plus uh, handed situation it's a d uh and it's a tough grade but it's a different bench they've had in the past but yeah. it's where it speaks to how solid their uh, starting roster is yeah exactly we don't need to uh see this team overly rely on these guys you're not going to see a lot of uh pinch hitting opportunities but yeah 
I'm I'm just a step below you. I got a B just because they they're doing exactly what you expect of them. They're spelling their stars when the guys are getting in there. When somebody like like you know Kike has really helped his resurgence has really helped that overall grade. And I just love Barnes. I'm gonna keep bringing him up. Uh, so yeah. that that helps me out. Him doing as well as he have just because entering the season the expectations were maybe in the sewer. That's not even the gutter. We're talking sewer right now. Um, it's a B for me. The bench is doing more than uh, more than some kind of. I feel more than some expected of them. Okay, yeah, that's fair. I mean, I just I, I want to see a little more thump somewhere. I want to see a little bit more consistency. Yeah. Uh, just my grades purely based off of late game stuff, uh, and that's how that goes. Uh, because I know they're gonna have platoons somewhere. Um, I'm just gonna say. I'll just say D. I, I just have to stay right there for now. <laughs> I know it's critical. I know it's critical, That's fine. but it's just different than it has been in years past. They just don't really have those pure platoon thumpers that I'm used to. And I think that's just from comfortability of how they've been dealing with platoons in the past. Uh, so I think that's an area they could target. They just don't, again, they don't have much room for maneuverability uh, to bring somebody else in. So that's what it's going to be. Uh, Kike is going is to bring that grade up again, just because I, I feel like his play is coming to a good spot. Austin Barnes is doing fine, but we don't know what we're going to get out of him. So for now, it's what it is. But if Gavin Lux is on that bench, it's going to stay at that grade, you know. So it's it's hard for me to grade them much higher until yeah. we start to see some guys start to you know come back up to to that mean. So final thing we'll get into qu quickly here. If people are still watching, you guys are troopers. Uh, we we apparently are a couple of dudes who can just talk ball and that's Chat. fun and hopefully people enjoy that hopefully uh, you guys enjoy uh, episode one of this uh, monthly series where we are uh, breaking down to the nitty-gritty of what the Dodgers did that month but you got to have one big surprise for me do you want me to lead off or do you got uh, you got something uh, spicy for your lead off to, to lead off for I, mean, I, got, us? I got one that people hate all the time <laughs> I got every single time I bring him up, it's it's man. I've had this conversation a bunch of times. I don't know you you if you post this on long form podcast, this is great because people can sit back and just listen to the ranting. But <laughs> the thing nobody likes to talk about every single time is Alex Vesey has been a solid reliever. Nobody wants to talk about it at all, but he has. Look at Alex Vesey has Fip been does not like him. Walks you say per nine. I said Fip does not like him. Walks per nine Fip does not, not like him. <laughs> Fip does not like him. Hey, but he's you know honestly Get he's been getting done. the job done. Yeah. He really has been getting the job done. I've, I've said before that I don't think he I, – I tweeted out one thing last year, or and I wrote an article on DB about it, that he since he, last year when he got called up from OKC, he was terrific the rest of the year. Mm -hmm. Is he the perfect re left-handed reliever? No, he's not. But the Dodgers have made him essentially the only one when they traded away Caleb Ferguson. They traded away – Victor Gonzalez. So it's like they've made, they've put themselves in this spot. Is he the number, like a 1A option? No. But is he the Dodgers? Yeah. That's where, <laughs> where, yeah. So that's where he's at currently. Nick Ramirez is, is a, is a pitch to contact guy. He's not going to get a lot of whiffs. And since his two bad outings in Minnesota, you know, Alex Vesia hasn't allowed an earned run in his last eight and two thirds innings pitched. Yeah. You so, you really do yeah. like that that ability for uh, the real AV, as Jerry Harrison calls him on, on occasions, uh, for Vesia to come in and and offer up some punch. He will do that. And uh, my my uh, producer uh, uh, for the live stream, Mr. Uh, Kevin Skinner, one of the things uh, I, I really enjoy that he says is like, you know exactly what kind of outing that Vesia is going to have just by the first pitch he throws. You know, yep. if it's if it's way up and out, you know, up and away to a right hander, it's like, oh, here we go again. But uh, the thing I love about Vesia is, uh, or the where things I feel changed is he. It took him a couple of weeks, but he he found the slider and that made him into a weapon yep. again. And that's where he's been. So I like it. That is a good, uh, a, a decent surprise. I will give you that because I would, I, <laughs> I went all in on uh, the Vesia slander uh, in the off season. So. I'm yeah, happy to fine. eat crow on it right now. I really am. But there's a, there's a lot more season to be had. My uh, one big surprise, and I don't even know if I'm exceptionally surprised about it because I said I think he would figure it out, but that is Maxwell Steven Muncy figuring out how to play some defense at third base, at least by the eye like test it. to me. He... I mean, this is a stark, this is a vast, this is a massive improvement over the guy, the shell of a man we saw trying to play third last year, because that's what he told us. He like told it. us that at FanFest.
process. It's like, hey, you know what? A couple of plays early in the season got to my head, and that it kind of spiraled from there. He spent this past offseason shedding some pounds, putting in that work at the hot corner. He wanted to be good. He wants to be a Dodger for the rest of his career, and the only way he's going to do that is as a third baseman, maybe as a second baseman somewhere, but this is a guy that really wants to be good and wants to help his team, and it's been fun to watch the resurgence of, of our, uh, not even a resurgence, but just watch him figure it out. It shows you if you can apply yourself and you, you eat your vegetables, you can go and do anything you want, kids. Yeah, no, I like it. And, and then... <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, you got to inspire him sometimes. <laughs> no, I like it. I like it. I like it. You know, he, to his to his credit, to your credit, he had two two defensive runs saved. Just look that up. You know, UZR 150. It's a great stat. Uh, it doesn't bode well for him, but to eye test, he's improved to to where he's been at in the last three years. He's definitely improved or two years. He's definitely improved. So I know for a fact that it's been reported he used a smaller glove. I think we talked about that in the offseason. He used a smaller glove to really work on that, and that's helped him a bunch. He looks like a third baseman. He yeah. slimmed down. And I saw him, you know, I saw him at the Blue Diamond Gala. He looks good. Like, yeah. he looks very good. So whatever anybody says about him, he looks terrific. And I'm, that's not sugarcoating it. I've got no, yeah, I've got no skin <laughs> in the game in Max. But he's definitely, he looks much improved. He looks body-wise. He looks terrific. Uh, and it's showing. And it's definitely showing. So, yes, awesome takeaway. That, that one, that's, a, that's one I haven't really thought about in a bit. because that, But that's a good thing. That's a really good thing. When you don't have to think about stuff that was a problem, mm -hmm it's how much of it is a problem. So two, yeah. two, that, that well was, done. that was my, uh, kind of something I've been saying the last, uh, week, week or two Good on, one. on my shows with Muncie is like the whole thing you needed out of Max Muncie this season was to just not be a problem. And you yeah. saying that tells me he's doing a bang up job, at not being a problem. And Hey, even adding a couple uh, DRS along the way, but we appreciate that. We appreciate you guys for watching this. Hopefully you enjoyed it. Uh, we're, almost an hour and a half into it so comment uh somewhere at the bottom put uh, a cheese whistle so we know you guys watched all the way to the end that just seems like a good word but uh Nothing. what any final thoughts from you before we get out of here scott no nah, man you know great month of may or great month of april uh looking ahead i, I just I just some can more consistency across i hope that the bullpen injuries don't really catch up you know and, and i hope they figure that out there they're able to find the innings uh, but offensively, it looks like they're really clicking. It looks like that lower half is re that lower third is really bridging a gap towards the top, just like we want to see. Um, I hope Mookie Betts it continues to be the hitter he is because I know for the power that he's tapped into in recent years, uh, people think that he that's who he is. But I think just me purely looking at it, I think this is the best Mookie Betts we're seeing right now. He's talked about expanding his ability on the bases, and he's such a savvy guy out there. I think that works. So my thoughts looking ahead are really, I hope the lower third can really continue that consistency there. Let's see if CT can do something. Gavin Lux can do something, but Miguel Rojas is going to keep doing his thing. So let's see the lower third keep giving opportunities to the top. Otani figure that stuff out with Crisp <laughs> and go from there. So looking ahead, just find some consistency on areas yep. that they've been slowly creeping into. So just find that good baseline and roll from there. Yeah, for the month of May, for me, guys, just get healthy, stay healthy. This team cannot withstand uh, very many more injuries, especially on the pitching side of things. But eat I, your vegetables. <laughs> eat your vegetables, kids. It's good <laughs> for you. You could be grow big and strong like Max Muncy. But <laughs> that is a uh, Scott Gearman. Look, I pointed the right way and I said the right name. I am Clint Basias, guys. Make sure you fo uh, follow us. I put the little uh, graphics here at the bottom for everybody to follow us. You know where to tell. tell them too in case they're listening tell them where to find you on uh, the twitter machine you can find me on uh at, at twitter you know at scott gearman spelled the same way uh i've got a you know a great profile photo that blake williams edited my guy <laughs> appreciate it love him a bunch uh but yeah you can read me over at dodgerblue.com do you know a lot of their media content on their website as well thursday shows i'll be doing those with blake uh you know every week uh hopefully some more stuff coming soon we're gonna hopefully do a 30 minute q a with fans coming right up here but a lot of fun stuff so i'm really looking looking forward to what we're doing here man right on follow that guys subscribe to the channel over there of course subscribe here if you guys enjoyed the show and we'll see you on the next one